Welcome to Tai Chi. Everybody ready? Let's warm up. Hands at your waist, turn your neck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. Stretch your neck. Point your chin out and retract it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. Turn your shoulders. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Other way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Expand your chest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Waist exercise, interlock your fingers, keep your arms closer to your head, turn at the hips and waist to look at the heel of your opposite foot. Here we go. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Airplane. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Touch toe. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Turn your hips. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Be careful. Shift your weight to the left foot. Good Tai Chi posture. You're straight up. Your weightless foot is your right foot. We're going to kick it ten times. Okay, not hard, but in good balance. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other side. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Kick your butt, shift your weight. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Turn your knees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Heisman. Opening up our span, parallel feet, choose the right side, your right hand side, okay? Cross and sit on that side. Get a good stretch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Shift your weight and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Short one. One, two, three, four, five. Other way. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so how many practice golden cockerel? More people, maybe, huh? So, golden cockerel re re um, requires us to stand on one foot. When we stand on one foot, we know through the practice of Tai Chi that there are elements in which we have on board, each one of us has, that will help us with balancing. So what are the elements? First of all, we know that good Tai Chi posture uh, is important in that our Dantin points, the one through our skull, the one through our chest, and the one two inches below our navel are lined up like this. How? With your finger? Lined up like this. So we can advance, we can retract, and we can go to the sides. As long as our Dantin points are lined up, we can never advance and do this because we will fall. It's obvious but we have to teach ourselves that this cable or our Dantin points or our backbone has to be straight up. As a result of being straight up, our, our, um, our head or our face has to be looking out into infinity. However, the chin is slightly tucked downwards, but not so that you only see the ground. You're tucking it downwards, not straight and parallel to the ground, but slightly dipped down. So as a result of uh, lining up our Dantin points and our chin slightly down, our hands or our middle finger lays to the side of our, on the side seam of our pants. Okay, so can we do that? As a result of that, you found that your shoulders drop down, okay, almost like a rag doll, but not stiff like a soldier. That's not the posture we're looking for. So once your sh shoulders drop down and you do feel the side seam of your pants, you found that the butt now, your behind, is slightly tucked under rather than straight or rather than protruding. So it's sort of tucked under, which will allow your chest to concave inward rather than again be flat. So that is good Tai Chi posture. The head is always erect. The tongue is on your palate, not against your teeth, but on your palate, okay, throughout all of Tai Chi. And that's for breathing purposes. The knees now are not bent like this. They're not straight like this and locked in, but they are relaxed. So you can give it a little flex, but not to the point where it's bending, okay? But Never lock it in, lock it in, okay? So this stance is, we're doing it and practicing it while we're standing and not moving, but that stance remains the same in movement, okay? In movement also. For instance, when we're a golden cockerel, we know that we're lined up, we have good Tai Chi posture. We also know that two inches below our navel is our center of gravity. Center of gravity, what's that? It's the stuff that's going to keep you in balance and stable because you're obeying what is natural. Gravity is helping you to ground yourself and to root yourself, okay? The power of the mind plays a really important role in Tai Chi. If you can clearly understand and think it through, that will be a plus in getting your body to move, okay? So the mind is very active. 
it says we're in good Tai Chi posture. Actually, you saw me from here, open here, because we are going to create movement. So this is the stance that we take for golden cockerel. When golden cockerel stands on one foot, we are totally focused. We are creating movement and energy and pushing down and pushing up as we try to stabilize ourselves, okay? And it's not a matter of who can get it up the highest or who can get it up the first, but it's knowing your body and how you're using your body. So how am I using my body? You saw me do it four times. Was I doing it like this? And was I doing it like this? First off, yeah, you say no, because you saw something going a little bit angled to the side, and you saw a certain angle to the side. So what am I doing? I'm turning my cable, the cable or your backbone or the, your uh, Danton points can turn one way or the other way. It can also advance at all because it can retract and go sideways, but as long as they're lined up, okay? So that's gonna create good movement. I'm also not using my hands abruptly and sharply to get my movements, to get my balance. But what am I doing? Can you do this with me? Can you do this with me? Any side. What am I doing? It's soft, it's curved. It spirals, it circles. So that's what we want to create, okay? It's a little harder when we do it stationary, but perhaps together it will help us, okay? So I gave you a few elements. Let's just try to put those to, to good use, okay? Part of Tai Chi posture, you might take the image that you are like a marionette, that is, marionettes, they just sort of dangle a little bit. So your knees are slightly bent. When she says drop your shoulders, your shoulders are dropped. It's not up here like this. You're not at attention, you're not at attention. You're here, here. Sort of a relaxed and you're sort of, your, 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 your back is straight and your butt is just pointing straight to the ground. So I used to say, if somebody were to bump your legs away, you would land right on your okole. And that's what you want to be, straight up, but not Ramrod. Okay. Good. Also, also, try this. Stand straight-legged. Feel how your feet touch at the ground. Bend your knees a little bit, and see what the sensation is of your feet touching the ground. Hopefully, what you feel is, when you're up here, you're, you're a little less in touch with the ground than when you're here. Your feet starts to feel, and that's what posture does. When you lower your body posture, there's more focus to the lower extremity. And that's what you want because that's where everything comes from. Your power from gravity pulling on you and you are seated here. You will be working with gravity in different ways, but you need to be in contact with the ground. Okay, great. So a good term for that is optimal position. You're in the optimal position, obeying gravity, helping yourselves to stay balanced or in balance, okay? All right, so we said that we would try to be a golden cockerel and do it in a way that's safe, okay? Here we go. So we're gonna be a golden cockerel first on our left foot, okay? Here we go, golden cockerel stands on its left and alternating to his right. One more set. Okay, very good. All right. So let's look at it a little bit, a little bit more. So we said yes, we're creating spirals, the spiral coming up higher, so that we could push down at the same time, pull up. The more we want to be stable, with a more our counterbalance hand 
as well as our center hand has to work in unity, in synchrony, okay? So we don't say, remember, push down, and then push, bring up. We do it together, okay? Do it together. We're focused. I know that if I'm, um, I falter, perhaps you will, because the concentration is not there. So what do we concentrate on? We concentrate and we say, where is our Danten point? Where is that two inches below our navel? And everybody has that imaginary point and has to be strong in our focus, in our mental, mental mind being very alert. We also said that we needed to favor the left foot if we're standing left. We don't want to come straight up to the center here, to the center, but to the side of our body slightly, okay? The hand that comes up centers our body, centers our body. We don't want that hand out here or way across here, okay? So let's see. Whatever side you want to be, I want that center hand towards the center of your body. Other side, the center of your body. Okay, so Tai Chi has a lot to do with centering ourselves using our core. Our core, because that's the strongest part and we want to continue maintain it and get it stronger to prevent accidents. The other hand has a really big job. You know that the, uh, the forward hand or the hand that comes up centers your body. The other hand sits to the side of your, your hip. Sits to the side of your hip. How? Sits to the side of your hip. It doesn't go to sleep like this, but it sits to the side of your hip as if you were holding a, a ball from the top. So the hands are not, fingers are not straight out, they're not sleeping, but they're kind of curved, okay? Because everything in Tai Chi is rounded, okay? Everything in Tai Chi, especially our style, Yang Tai Chi, is a whole bunch of circles, semicircles, curves, spirals, okay? So let's see if we can put some of these elements in, okay? Shift weight to the, I'll, go, I'll do it this way. Shift weight to the left, up, Golden cockerel. Down, shift weight, push down, pull up. Swiveling on your axle, centering the forward hand, simultaneously pushing down the other hand that's holding a ball, thinking through our movements, not worrying about the duration at this time, not worrying about the height of our kick, but as long as we get all the elements in, we're doing very well, okay? So this one requires practice, and at the same time, it's giving us strength and stamina because we're learning that all our body weight has to be held on one leg. So you're gonna build up muscles, you're gonna bring up stamina, you're gonna learn to concentrate just for that um, duration of time. In kicking out now, kicking out requires, yes, balance again. Yes, curving, centering. How am I centering? I'm bringing my center, my hands towards my core. I'm following my kick. I'm counterbalancing with that other hand. And I'm also swiveling or turning or rotating on my axle. This is not correct, okay? This is not correct. I come here and I say, I got it. These hands are not counterbalancing me. The kick now is not towards the center, but on a diagonal, matching the hand, especially the right, the right hand, okay? But in a counterbalance for the left, so here again, we're swiveling on our axle. We're favoring our center by bringing, collecting our energy, bring it to the center in our core area, and then dispensing, okay? 
and coming down. All right, let's do it. Let's try. Okay, so feet apart. We're gonna we're gonna kick out from our kick out our from our right. We're kicking our right foot. Therefore, we're gonna pull all our energy and weight onto our left. Okay, right now we're 50-50. We're gathering our energy, shifting slowly to our left, centering our hand with our right hand on the outside of the cross and kicking out right. Left hand on the outside, swiveling on that axle and following the kick with your eyes and with your hand. Gathering the energy in a circle, semicircle, centering the energy, kicking out with our right, right hand follows the right kick. Left hand on the outside, left foot coming up, kick out, left. Down, right hand, right foot ready to go, and out. Semicircle, centering it, Left hand, left foot, follow with your eyes, follow with your hands. One more set. Right hand on the outside, right foot coming up, kick out, right. Down, left hand, left foot, getting ready to follow out. Okay? So I'll give you an example of myself. You saw my kicks are kind of weak, but to me, that's the best I can do. I could have someone or be more disciplined and try to kick higher, but I feel I can't anymore. You know, I'm, I'm, on, I'm an old lady. And I look at my videos from the past and my kicks were slightly higher, but over time it's gotten a little droopier. But for me, I say, you know what? That's me. So take it from me that whatever you can do may fall in the same pattern, okay? But you're still doing Tai Chi. You're still getting the health benefits from whatever movements we're doing. This is a review, and some of you are brand new, so this is a good time to learn it all over again. We said that in order to do Tai Chi, we need to set a foundation, and the foundation lies with our feet. Once we get that foundation really firm and our feet know what to do, we can add on hands. And even when we do that, the hands may be perfect, but the feet start to do, do something else because our focus is multi-focused now, okay? It's being challenged. So the, I would suggest if you really want to do well in Tai Chi, learn how to put your feet together first. Okay, and then when that comes gradually, you add on the hands, okay? I remember when I first learned Tai Chi, it was very, very difficult. But I made it a point to say the more difficult it was, the harder I was gonna work on it. I was determined to figure out how to do it. I'm very happy that I continued. And why? It's because I get to teach, because I feel good about the movements, and you feel that you're very confident, more confident. You can walk and say, hey, I can do that, you know? So that's where I want to uh, share that because I think it's very important. So we said that with good Tai Chi posture, we learn to make a T stance. The T stance is like this, like the capital letter T. There is weight on the right foot. The energy is stored. We learn that the, we can fall if we have two weighted feet and we try to move. So in Tai Chi, being a discipline, we store the energy on this right foot as we create our letter T. Because the left foot is weightless or insubstantial, it can take an L stance. When it takes an L stance, it's a placeholder here. There's a little bit more weight but the weight remains on the cap of the T. It has to grow from the sole of your foot to the leg, to your knee, to your thighs, to your hips, your waist, your chest, your shoulders, and then it can flatten down on a bow stance. We said that this is a bow stance because the forward foot is like a bow and arrow and the back leg is like an, straight as an arrow, however, not locked, okay? 
We also said that we could sit back, we sit back, and we sit down on an imaginary stool to allow this healed foot to then twist. When we twist, that foot now gets firmed down and rooted down and storing our energy so that we can come and make a letter T to take care of the other side. The other side means now T stance out here, back into the side on an L, turn the hips and waist, flatten down, O stance. Sit back, sit down on that imaginary stool, pivot the insubstantial right foot, firm down so that it's on a line or parallel to the tile of the floor, turn directly to the bulletin board, create your T, weight on the back or the right, that's your energy. We step out into the side on an L stance, move that energy as powerful as it can be to come down and be on a bow stance. Sit back, sit down on that imaginary stool, pivot that heel foot or left foot, root down or ground down and obey gravity to store our, our um, energy, T stance, L stance, turn the hips and waist, O stance. Sit back, sit down, pivot, root down, T stance, L stance, turn the hips and waist, reposition that back leg, back foot to a 45 degree, knee not beyond your toes. Let's do something wrong altogether, but don't, don't fall now, okay? Put your left knee beyond your toes slightly. Bring it back, push it back forward, push it forward. When we push that knee forward, we're more apt to fall. Therefore, we have to line up that knee with, the to with your toe. It should never go beyond that. It should be lined up. Sit back, sit down, pivot, root down. That's the cap of the hat of the T, T stance. Out and to the side. How with your hand? Out and to the side. In one motion. Here. Where? Here. Right foot goes here. Turn the hips and waist there. Okay, we're going to practice on that out and to the side because I think that's the hardest thing. Twist step, root down, T stance. How with your left hand? Out and to the side. Show me again and say out and to the side. But in one motion so that here's going to be your left heel. Where? Here because you said it's out and to the side in one motion. Here we go. Out and to the side on our heel, turn our hips and waist, bow stance. Sit back, sit down on that imaginary stool, twist step, ground down, root down, T stance, L stance, out and to the side, turn the hips and waist, bow stance. Sit back, sit down, pivot, and T stance. Okay, so I know that I have a really smart class. I know that you're very observant, and I know you're saying, wow, this is hard. It is hard, okay? So let me help you. Let me help you a little bit more. And every time you say you can't get it, just throw it right back at me and say, you know what? You gotta teach me a little bit more. That will work, okay? I promise but you gotta stay with me, okay, stay with me. So there are three forms, at least three major forms in Tai Chi, and that is the T stance, the L stance, and the bow stance. So if you're having trouble with any of those formations, perhaps this is what we can do. We can pull back and do it a little bit more elementary, okay, more to our liking. So give me a T stance. First, the right foot is on a cross section of, a, of one line, cross section of a line. So the front foot is, is towards the upper part and the, uh, the heel part is 
on the lower part of that cross section, okay, of that cross of the line. So you, your feet and your toes are right in line with that tile line. It can never swing out this way, but it's on a line, on a cross section of a line. Okay, so you're gonna step there and weight it down, and this is your T. This is your T. So how did I place this left foot? The left foot is yet on that perpendicular line. And it's not out there, right? It's not out here, but it's sorta almost touching that uh, first right foot. This is the T stance, okay? Everybody move away from that. Move away from that. You're gonna show me with your feet how you create a T stance, and I'm gonna see how you, how you, how you do it, okay? Give me a T stance. Remember what I said. Okay. From here, everybody has a T stance. Okay, now show me where your energy is. Where is your weight? Just show me by having that stance. Okay, so the weight is on the back or left foot. And I can see because you are sort of weighted down. If you were this way, straight up, I know that you haven't understood because both feet have weight. We want the left foot almost weightless. We want to drill down and obey gravity on the right foot. Okay, very good. Now, to do an L stance, there's several ways of looking at an L stance. This is one way, okay? This is my T. I am making the letter L. How? I'm going out into the side so that it's favorable in position of how you're looking at it. I'm coming out and to the side. If I had a piece of chalk, I would surely make the L, okay? But for our purposes, an L stance could be also taken this way. It could be out here where it's supposed to be because I went out and to the side in one motion with my heel. How did I do that? I just plopped it here. And how do you think this is an L? When I drag that foot back, I have to be creative, and this is my L stance. It's kind of um, a, a big uh, creation, but rather than say make the L this way, because I don't want you to give me this curvature, I just want you to give me this, that's the way the L in both cases should be. Listen to the reason why the L stance is important. So if this is my T stance on a bisection or cross section, and I'm rooted down nicely, my Danton points are lined up. When I take my L stance, I have the space in which my knees can turn without getting them um, jarred or too tight. Okay, I'm gonna take another step, okay? If I turn, and I have to, I have the room in which to turn. If I did not do a good L stance, and I just said, here it is, right here. She said, out, but you didn't listen. I said, out, but to the side, right? So if I didn't do that, and I just did this, I would have barely enough room, and it's already hurting, putting stress on my knee. I don't want your knees to give out. So you want to come out into the side to give you that room to turn, okay? On a bow stance now, there is a tendency to T nicely, L nicely, turn the hips and waist, bow stance. So you don't wanna lose your good uh, vertical Danten points. You wanna keep them up straight. So remember I said T stance, out and to the side, turn the hips and waist straight up, knee not beyond your toe. Once the knee goes beyond the toe, I'm not in vertical down 10 points lined up, I will have that, that risk of falling. Same thing with the other side, you root down, your T is here, your L is here, you turn your hips and waist, you can reposition that back foot and be on a bow stance. 
the in-between to get to the three major stances in Tai Chi is this. Sit back. I don't mean sit back this way, because I will fall back. I'm in good Danton, uh, vertical Danton points. All I do is bring my weight back, and I sit down to alleviate the weight of the right foot to then pivot. When I pivot, it's crucial that you be on a line or parallel to the line. Root down and forget about the cross section now, okay? Because once you're in motion, you're not going to be on that exact line. But you are going to be in that same configuration. Do not take me wrong. Sit back. Sit down on that imaginary stool. Twist step. Parallel or on a line. T stance. Out and to the side. Turn the hips and waist. Keep the vertical Danton points lined up. You know that because your knee is not beyond your toe. Sit back and sit down. Lower yourself. Twist step. Parallel or on the line. Root down, T stance, out and to the side, L, turn the hips and waist, bow. Sit back, sit down, pivot. I'm going to pick up the tempo a little bit, okay? T stance, L stance, turn the hips and waist, bow stance. Sit back, sit down, pivot, root down or ground down. Capital T, L, turn hips and waist, bow. Sit back, sit down, pivot, root down, T, L, turn the hips and waist, bow. Sit back, sit down, pivot, hold your ball on the T steps. Okay, so good. We have a platform in which to work on, okay? Work from. If we didn't do this, you would have no platform. You wouldn't know where to start. So it's important that you go back home and practice this, OK? Come back, and we'll refine it, refine it all the time. For those of you who are really saying, wow, I didn't know Tai Chi was this difficult. It looks so easy. It will be easy if you give yourself time, time to prep for it, OK? Now. What was I going to say? Um, there are lots more things that I can tell you, but for now, I think it's going to work out just nicely if you give yourselves time to practice and time to soak in and time to uh, understand. For those of you who are not quite getting it, say like me, okay, don't worry. I know that you are intaking it fine but finding it challenging, like all of us, to make our body understand what we're thinking. But that's the power of Tai Chi. Only you are going to be able to put your body to movement, other than somebody coming there and actually twisting your leg and pulling it apart. Just no fun, OK? So you empower yourself. You understand, you watch, you hear and then you put it into play. And we're all individuals. You don't have to be super athletic to learn Tai Chi. You can be, but it might be a, a still a struggle. So just accept for, we, I accept you for who you are and we'll build from there. All right. In Tai Chi, we're often referring to the upper body being the most important part because we're looking for the flaring of the hands and the nice motions. But the hands, if you can understand how I use these words or praise the hands, go for the ride. What do I mean? The hands can go this way and that way, but all I have to do is set up my hand set up my hand, and they go for the ride. They set up my hand, and I leave it there, and they go for the ride. 
what is it that I'm doing? It looks a little unique. It looks as if it were magical, but what is it? Do I have extrasensory powers? I only have what you have. But how do we get there? What is it? Anybody can tell? Can you see what I'm doing? What is it? What part of my body? Is it my mind? Is it my ears? Is it my eyes? Is it my nose? What is it? Watch one more time. What is it? Show me just by putting your, putting your hand where you think it's a power is. Okay. Whatever you pointed to is good. You need your whole body into this. But the steering, the commanding is done by your hips and waist. Okay, watch. My hands are here. This is not a Tai Chi movement. But what happens? As long as this guy is functioning, I can put my hands any old place and they'll move. The faster I do it, the faster I'll get there. The slower I do it, it'll get there too because I'm using my hips and waist, okay? So you have to remember this image. You have to remember what you just heard. You're gonna hear it again. But if you can capitalize and grow from what I said, you will have an easier time in Tai Chi. So the example I gave is one of the harder movements in the 10 form because there's so many things that are going on. But once, so many things, what are the so many things? The hands are like this, the one hand comes here, one hand comes down, and one foot comes out. There are three, at least three obvious things that are going on, but there are much more that's within my system that maybe you cannot see but you surely can feel. So that's a multitasking uh, movement that requires a lot of setting it up correctly. But once it's set up, you just leave the hand there and the hands go for the freebie or the ride because this is the guy that's, your hips and waist are steering the movement. And what else is steering the movement? Your mind, your powerful mind you're saying, I need to set it up, and I need to step out, and I need to turn my hips and waist. If you don't think through that process, the mind is sleeping, and it's not helping you with your movement. So how is this going to be helpful to us in everyday activities? If we know that we're slipping or we're sliding, we're going to say, hey, get those vertical dantian points up. Or one hand is on the counter, one hand is on the other counter. What are we going to do? We're going to use our hips and waist to stabilize ourselves. So we all know that Tai Chi is a meditation in motion. It's a dance. But if you get so, well, even today, people tell me, I like Tai Chi, but I don't know what I'm doing. But I'm focusing so hard in listening and looking and trying that I forget about everything that's around me and I have my relaxation. That is the beginning of how Tai Chi can grow on you. Tai Chi is based on martial arts. Martial arts meaning, bam, get that guy out of my space, drag him down. But it's done in a way that promotes soft movements. But the main thing is, it's not giving you the, your, your prey, uh, being a prey to your opponent by giving him the time to just pull you back down. It's, tai Chi is teaching you that we need to be in the optimal gravitational position to keep our balance so that someone came by me, they could push, and I would still keep my posture. But once I'm out of line, sure, it's easy to to, uh, to fall or to be the loser of a martial art contest. So all of this is going to be embedded into our stances and our 
and our images, okay, and oftentimes you're going to hear, can come in and say, hey, it's not just dancing, but it's actually pulling down your opponent. And then one more time, pushing them away. And what do you do? You're building up the energy then to then push him back out, okay? But remember now, when you get that energy and you start it right and you come up, you don't want to fall. So that's where everything is connected. Everything is, um, hinge, everything is hinged on your posture. Movements are coming from posture. Movements are coming from martial arts. But we soften it up. But we don't soften it so that it becomes a totally uh, soft dance that forget about the images of martial arts, okay? All right, we said that we would start with um, some of our movements of our hand. So yes, you say, well, if it's hand, I can do it. You know, I can do all kinds of fancy things with my hand. But remember, the premise is, if you set your hands up correctly, they will do the work and come out nicely. Why? The mind is saying, I know how to do it. I've seen it, I've heard it, I've tried it and the core is strong enough to exude the energy to bring that, that forward hand out, okay? So we're gonna learn now to hold our Tai Chi ball. So left hand is two inches below your navel and the right hand is up here. I'm gonna look different, but this is, this is correct. Left hand is two inches below your navel, right hand is on chest level, kind of bringing it in. And so we know we're not holding a block. We know we're holding a ball. So we're kind of soft on it. We can spin the ball. How can we spin the ball? The right hand can go down and the left hand can go up. And you're in the same configuration in that the hand is at chest level, the left, and the right is two inches below your navel. So you can spin the ball. You can spin it anyway. Okay, spin it fast but usually it's gonna be slow. But every time you spin the ball, the shoulders do not come up, okay? This is totally wrong. You need to keep your Tai Chi posture and drop your shoulders because you can spin the ball, okay? So how you spin the ball, you don't be left this way, palm to palm, but you bring your arms in so that they're holding a bigger ball and you can spin. Two inches below my navel, at chest level, okay? The ball now helps you to center because here again, it's bringing your, every, all your energy to your core. So the ball is never here, the so no, it's never here, never high, but right in the center, chest and two inches below your dantian. Not small like this, not super big, but right here, okay? The shoulders are never raised, never raised, because in Tai Chi, we're trying to achieve energy that flows all through our different parts of our, our body in a continuous, smooth way. But once something is tightened, the shoulder is tight or the knee is locked, that's blockage. So you don't want, you don't want to create blocks in your energy. You want it to flow. All right. So I think I'm going to end class in four minutes by showing you Yang Ten form. What I want you to do is, yes, enjoy it, but I want you to see how the hands are not reaching out or reaching because it needs to be there, but try to see that the hands are there
it. Easy, real easy and so nice. So that's my um, objective is to teach you that and we will learn it together and I'm sure that you will really enjoy it, okay? But sometimes it doesn't come easy, but make it a point to say, I can do it, I can learn it, no stress, just have the patient, patience and the drive to do something different and you're all set. See you next time.